Hi, my name is James Clem. Let's talk about a topic that's on a lot of people's minds, particularly when we're working with ceramics in our clinical theaters. How do we get our ceramics to match in the mouth? I love ceramics. I started with PFMs way back in dental school. Then we worked into like Lucites, like Impress. That changed what we did in the 1990s in clear till now. I still like Impress. Then Emax came in and we have other brands of ceramics that work extremely well. How do we get them to blend in? So let's take a moment, look at this photograph. Okay, which tooth did we restore? We're gonna come back to that in just a moment. But here's the question that I always ask myself and when I'm working with patients. It's about the art of distraction. In other words, can we be perfect? No, we can't. Is nature perfect? No, it's not. So when we know that, it gives us a little more latitude to work with the case. Here's the thing that I want to get clear. When you're choosing a ceramic, we choose it from the incisal or cuspal one half. And we're looking for what? Not the color, not the hue. We're looking for the value. When we get the value down and understand the value, the last thing I want is to have a ceramic lower value than the other teeth around it, particularly when you're doing one ceramic. So let's look at that case again. You can see if you studied a little bit more, starting to identify which one it is. And here was the treatment sequence. Use a proper ceramic to block out the dark root with bonding techniques. We bonded in that ceramic and a month later, we had a really nice blend. So it's about the art of distraction. That's what this video is all about. We're gonna go through a few principles of how to match a ceramic, but the best is to come at the end of the video because I'm gonna share with you an app to walk through this exercise. Now we're gonna use Emacs as our ceramic of choice. We can apply that to other ceramics as well, but it's really good to understand the factors that will impact how we blend in a ceramic in today's world where we have these high strength ceramics and we don't need a copy. I have one request before we finish this video. Below, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. That way you'll be notified when that next video shows up. And if you want a deeper level of training, you can go to theclemminstitute.com or cadstar.org. I have an online membership where we have lots of videos similar to what you see here that goes through the full workflow for CEREC and I'm adding other options there as well as I'm getting into my lab work here and using ExoCAD. Okay, before we get into the principles of blending, let's look at one more case. I think it will help us understand a few more factors about the art of distraction. Take a look at this definition to combine or mix so that the constituent parts are indistinguishable from one another. And that's what we see in nature. Quite often, the centrals are not the same shades as the lateral, and the laterals are not the same shades as the canines. Step further back, you get a lot of different colors in the buccal corridors, even in a natural mouth. So here's a case that we milled out four different sets of seven to 10. So set one, set two, set three, and set four. So here's the question. Which one are you gonna choose? There's more than one that will work. I've used this in my presentations for a number of years, and it's really interesting to see which one people choose. And it's across the board. So take a few moments. These are the final ceramics. Empress B1 Multi. We have BL4 HT Emax. We have MT B1 Emax. And we have BL3 Multi Empress. Which one are you gonna choose? There's more than one of these cases that will work. In fact, in my lectures, all of them have worked. So here's what we've learned from this exercise. We chose B1 Multi. Why? Because of the dark roots at least on most of them, a lateral and two centrals. The darker root was better blocked out with the multi M press because the cervical side of that block, which we machine out, is LT, which means it blocks out underneath better than the other options there, and it graduates into an incisal translucency blend. 
I still like Impress. It's still one of my favorite ceramics. What's interesting about this case though is take a look at those incisal edges. I have posted this on media and the response was interesting. In fact, there was a lab technician that was saying, wow, those centrals are way too rounded. Well, what I learned from this exercise is when I interviewed the patient, she said she wanted to have the same shape of teeth as her high school prom. Interesting. So that's what we did. We saw pictures, we did a mock-up, we found the shape she wanted, and that's what we did to help heal her heart. So often when I'm doing a smile, it's about the heart. It's how we integrate this healing factor of a better presentation to heal the heart. And that's the reason why we want a good ceramic blend. So let's look at principle one, the thickness of the ceramic. Now in digital dentistry, in fact, I'm up here at my homestead where I'm using the PM7. I use the prime scan to scan with, and I also have the prime mill. And in my office, I have the CEREC system up here. I have a lab system. I can do great work with both systems. These principles are the same. But what we see with thickness is that sometimes I don't know which shade of ceramic I'm going to use nor translucency or opacity until I find out the thickness, which is one of the most critical principles that we have to deal with, which means often we don't choose the final shade that we want for the target shade. One reason why I really prefer digital dentistry is in the virtual design software, whether you're using CEREC, ExoCAD, or 3Shape, you can identify the thickness of that ceramic minus the spacer. We need that metric pretty soon. We're gonna put that into an app that helps us to determine the shade. So thickness is so critical in knowing which final ceramic to choose. Principle number two, how about translucency of the ceramic we're gonna choose? Now I'm gonna use Emacs as our illustration here. We have low translucency, which means it's really opaque. It's gonna block out whatever is underneath that restoration, and it also will balance more light. We have MT, which is medium translucency, and we have HT, which is high translucency. I love HT, but we have to also blend to the translucency in the mouth based on what we see. Now, in a factor like this, this is how I love to get a good blend when I can use HT, which I can half of the time. I prep more conservatively, particularly cervically. If we have enamel on the margin, we can prep to a soft chamfer, even to a feather with Emax, which is a lithium disilicate. Now, as we blend that onto the natural dye by Ivoclear, which represents the color of the prep, you can see that there's a phenomenal optical result. And that is we're making this monochromatic material into a polychromatic effect by how we prep and choose the translucency. Isn't that beautiful? To me, that's the essence of beautiful ceramics. Of course, we can't use it on a dark prep, but the principle behind this is that many of the teeth we work on, we can use this principle. So when we choose translucency, how are we gonna choose? Is it gonna be HT, MT, or LT? Keep this concept in your mind for a moment more. The app that we're gonna use will help us guide which translucency to use within our ceramic and nail it. The next principle of blending ceramics is what's our target shade? Now you can use any type of shade guide you want that you're familiar with. In fact, in my hands, I've actually customized my own ceramics so I have my own shade tab. But if we're using the Vita Shade tab here, we're going to choose a target shade that blends in with value and the hue. Let's take a look at this case here. We have a target shade of B1. Take a look at that ceramic. It's even a little lower value. It's HT. That's actually BL2HT. So to get a B1, we're choosing a BL2HT based on some of these factors that we're talking about. The other principle that we're gonna see here is in this other case here. We have a B1, BL4 target shade that we want. Here is a minimally prepared tooth. We're keeping the enamel 
minimally invasive. To get that BL4B1 shade, we used BL2HT Emax, and that ceramic was about 400 microns thick, down to the margin, which is 300 to almost 50 microns. Yes, we can go that thin with Emax in our hands to get a really good blend. And that's the fun of using ceramics this way, is to stay minimally invasive. Almost never do I choose a B1 and a B1 when I'm working with Emax anteriorly, unless it's really thick or posterior on a thicker type of crown. Then we may choose the target shade for that, but the app's gonna help us through that decision. In this journey of choosing the right ceramic, the next step is to look at the color of the prep. Now, Ivy Clear has a system that's called the natural shade dye. And with that comes a shade guide. All we do is take that shade guide that comes with this system and blend it to the prep. Each shade comes with a material. It's like a composite that we can customize to the ceramic to make a customized shade guide prep that we insert into that ceramic to make sure we get the shade right. Now, in this case, we have a tetracycline situation where we have removed a few ceramics and looking at the color of those preps, you can see it's a challenge to work with. By using our custom shade guide, meaning that we had made a customized shade guide that I mentioned earlier, where I've milled out multiple ceramics that I use on a regular basis with a customized shade of the prep to choose the final ceramic. And here's your ceramic. You can see the centrals are a little brighter where we used a brighter cement, which I'm gonna to get to in just a moment. But that's how we get the blend. Usually centrals are a little brighter than the laterals and the laterals are a little brighter than the canine. Now, in this case, I thought we were able to get a really good harmonious blend working in a very challenging situation by applying some of these principles. Now, the next step in this journey is understanding how to use cement color for the final blend. I love Verilink Aesthetic. It comes both as a light cure and a dual cure. We can use it either way, and the dual cure will behave as the light cure from a color standpoint, so it's not going to go low in value. So let's illustrate this. What we see here is a single central, number eight. That's a thin veneer. It's about 400 microns thick with the different shades of the trying paste for very link aesthetic. And what we see here is we have different choices and we can really tone in and blend that ceramic with the final cement, particularly when you're doing one central. Those are the toughest, right? So when I'm working with Emacs, as you see here, we're trying in that Emacs where we chose the value as we've already described using the thickness, the color of the prep, and opacity choices based on the app. We're gonna to get to that in just a moment. And the try and paste. Now, when we look at this, what I wanna do when I'm doing a thin veneer, and I've learned this from experience, is to choose about one shade brighter than I really want on the day I'm gonna cement. Now, you gotta take that in faith. I've been doing this a long time. If I get a perfect blend when I cement that in, is probably gonna end up being a little low in value when it comes back. You may not see that in a full veneer case, but you will see that when you're doing one or two teeth. So by using these concepts with this final blending technique of using a try and paste to choose the color of cement, we can be fairly certain that we are going to have a good outcome. So let's go to your smart device. Here I have a, an iPhone or you can use an iPad download the IPS Emacs Shade Navigational app. And when you get that, you're gonna see that you have several options. There's five simple steps. Step one is to choose the shade we want. I'm gonna choose BL4. The indication, veneer. Color of the stump, I'm gonna choose ND2. That's like an A2. And then we're gonna choose the thickness. Here, I'm gonna have a veneer that's 0.5 millimeters thick and I have the option of choosing either a pressable option or a millable option. So we're going to choose millable since I love CAD CAM 
and generate the results. Now, to get to BL4, we have two basic options, LTBL3 or get this, HTBL1 to get the BL4. This has been a big help to me in my journey. It's allowed me to have that security to get it right. And when in doubt, always go brighter than what you think. Now, if I'm working posteriorly on onlays or margins that are super gingival, I'm gonna choose one or two shades brighter HT, usually two shades, and we can hide those margins as you see in this case, and we're gonna cement it with warm cement, either the warm or warm plus. It works like magic, and that margin will melt in the mouth where you can't see it. Now, I've had fun with you on this journey. Ceramic selection is about the art of distraction and blending, not for perfection, but blending of where it doesn't create visual tension and your eye doesn't see it right away. That's how we assess things. If we assess something and it's a distraction, we know something's not right. Just like with that first case I showed you in this vignette, we had the one central number eight restored. We looked at it for two to three seconds. It's hard to find in two to three seconds if you're not prepared for it. That's how we want to blend in the mouth, is create the art of distraction so it doesn't create visual tension. And when we do that, we're gonna get it right. Now in CAD CAM dentistry, I often will bracket, maybe choose one or two shades on either side of this selection, or you can mill out both. Now, in this case, I could choose maybe both options and see which one blends the best, the LTBL3 or the HTBL1. And when I'm working with a single central, that's often how I do it. And that's the beauty of CAD CAM, dentistry, and virtual design. So thank you for spending this time with me. I hope these principles have helped you and will help you in the future. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you post them below. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you folks in that next video. Bye now.